Good, welcome to everyone joining us today. My name is Kai from Greening Consultants. So today in this short webinar, we'll be exploring how food is related to our climate. Chicken rice, carrot cake, nasi lemak, laksa, roti prata and satay. These are some of our favourite local food in Singapore. But how is food even related to our daily life and environment? So one way how climate impacts our food system is how we get our vegetables and fruits. Since Singapore rely on countries like Indonesia and Malaysia for food supply, when weather changes, flooding in these areas tends to be more frequent and our vegetable prices will also get more expensive. In Singapore, we love food, we dine out and we eat. In fact, each person in Singapore consumes 367 kg of food each every year. However, as tasty as it is, we may order more than we can eat, especially during gathering or festive season. In 2019 alone, 744 million kg of food waste accounts for 11% of the total waste generated in Singapore. That equals to two bowls of rice per person every day. So, why are we wasting so much food? So, one reason is because we overbuy, overorder, and overcook. Common wasted household food items like rice, noodles, and bread are often thrown into the bin. To reduce our leftovers from a meal, we all can take action by buying, cooking, or ordering what we need. To help us keep track of what to buy, we can use a shopping list. On days when we are feeling full, we can ask for less rice or noodles. If kept safely in the refrigerator, leftovers can also be used to cook the next meal. Another reason for food waste is ugly food. So these fruits and vegetables are slightly bruised and discolored. In fact, 46% of fruits and vegetables are often discarded by manufacturers because they do not meet the market or personal ideal standards, even though they are completely edible. People often think that such food are less fresh, less nutritious, less tasty, or even having health risks. However, they are just as nutritious as normal food. So if you see an ugly food in the supermarket, do not hesitate to take it. So what else can we do to prevent food waste? We need to understand food labels better. So look at these two labels. Is there a difference between the word used by and best before? So for use by dates, these labels are used by for food that decay easily, such as milk and yogurt. Therefore, once the date has passed the use by dates, please do not consume the food. However, for best before dates, it tells us when the food will pass its best quality. For food like cereals, a food that passed the best before date, they can still be suitable to eat. Of course, do check for spoilage before consuming them. So to leave behind a better earth for our future generations, the way we eat can also have an impact. Producing meat requires a large amount of food, water, land, and energy. A simple 25% reduction in red meat will lead to an 8% decrease in heat-trapping gases released into the air, limiting global warming. So what is global warming? So global warming is partially caused by the greenhouse gas effect. When sunlight shines upon our Earth every day, some energy goes back to the space and some energy is being dispersed as heat. With greenhouse gases surrounding our Earth, the heat is being absorbed by the greenhouse gases, warming up the Earth. When animals like pig and cow are being bred, they produce manure and it contains greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. But it doesn't stop there. Since Singapore imports most of our meat from overseas, carbon is also being emitted during the transportation process. So we source the same piece of meat from UK instead of Malaysia, the meat from UK will generate a higher amount of emissions since it is further away from Singapore. 
As a country, we live the farming land. We import over 90% of our food from overseas. However, with the effect of climate change, our food supply can be easily disrupted. Currently, local farms produce a range of fresh products like eggs, vegetables and fish, representing less than 10% of Singapore's food requirement. As part of our SG Green Plan 2030, a national agenda to improve Singapore's environment, Singapore will be building up its food industry to produce 30% of our food locally and sustainably. Producing locally reduces the need to transport food to Singapore and lesser emissions will also be produced. Beyond just the country of origin, different types of food will also emit different amounts of emissions. So right here, I have different types of food, beef, chicken, fish, rice, pork, and vegetables. Now, make a guess which food production do you think will emit the most amount of carbon? Well, according to a research team by ASAR, if you place it in an order, beef takes the honour. For every 1 kg of beef, 24.4 kg of CO2 equivalent is being emitted, followed by pork with 12 kg of CO2 equivalent, fish with 6 kg of CO2 equivalent, then chicken with 3.5 kg of CO2 equivalent, followed by rice, vegetables and fruit. For a start, to reduce carbon, we can replace one meat dish with other alternatives. Soy-based products like tofu can serve as a healthy alternative to meat. It provides protein to strengthen our bones and contain less fatty substances like cholesterol compared to meat. Of course, remember to eat in moderation and not eat in excess. We can start small by going vegetarian for just one day a week. Eating too much red meat and processed meat can also be bad for your health. Remember to only fill a quarter of your plate with meat. Nothing more. Eating too much meat can raise the risk of diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. We should also avoid choosing a carnivore diet that focuses only on eating meat and other animal products with no vegetables or rice. Instead, we can choose the Mediterranean diet. It is a diet that focuses on plant-based food like beans, fruits, seeds. Olive oil serves as the main source of fat. Seafood and milk are also included in small amounts. For the Mediterranean diet, olive oil is the main source of fat and contains healthy fats that lower the amount of cholesterol in our blood. We can use leafy greens like kale and spinach, which are filled with vitamin C, good for our bodies and brains. Also, eating fish like sardines and salmon, which are rich, rich in omega-3 fatty acids, is good too. These fats can help relieve joint pains, lower the risk of heart failure. For Mediterranean diet, nuts can be a form of snacks, sprinkled on salad, pasta meals, and be used in beets. Nuts are also linked to lower risk of heart disease. Recently, there has been a rise in meatless alternative, also known as plant-based meat. So these products use plant ingredients such as soybeans, tofu, and wheat. Plant-based meat has similar taste, texture, flavor, and appearance compared to meat products. So plant-based meat also use up to 99% less water, 93% less land, and emits 90% less emissions compared to real meat. So patty, nuggets, sausage, well, you may think all of these are meat, they are actually made up of plant and do not actually contain any meat. So how can you eat healthily or find vegetarian meals in Wood Grove? So Food Grove is a website set up as part of Wood Grove's 10th anniversary in 2021 for residents to find good food around Oak Grove, you can assess the website by scanning the QR code and search vegetarian options on the website. Before we end off our webinar, we'll show you a video featuring MP Miss Heni So on the food trail to experience 
vegetarian dishes. So we just ended our house visit. So menu, we are going to go to So where are we going now? We are going to eat good Huh? Once you try it, you will get hooked. <laughs> 354A, there is this very interesting vegetarian smala xiang bo. I like la, I like swan la, but the ma part is a little bit tricky for me, so I will go for the xiao. You have wen dao. Can you smell it? Wow, oh, the smell. Wow, oh, hungry already, right? Okay, lie, 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 kai dong. Actually, right, this is the yes. first time I see a uh, mala full of chai. Yes, the healthier version. I'm going to try this first. Nai yo bao bu, salted egg yolk with uh, a step of margarine <laughs> or butter. It's a healthier version because it's mushroom. Mmm, tie ban tofu is my favorite. So long as I go to zi cha store, typically if I only eat zi cha, tie ban tofu is one of the must have. <laughs> So you see, mala xiang guo, people usually think that it's very oily, very sinful, very greasy, but we have a healthier version here in Woodbrook. So it really depends on what are the dishes that you choose to put inside. Okay, we are off to our next location. We're also on the same team on vegetarian food. Follow me. So, we are at the 325 Coffee Shop. 325 Coffee Shop actually has a lot of very nice food and the price is very reasonable. We've got dim sum here, we've got Malay food, roti prata, many food lah. Whatever you want it, actually you can have it here. But today, the one that I really want to feature and share with you guys, you know, is actually the vegetarian food. My favourite whenever I come here is this Hokkien Mee. Have you all tried? A vegetarian Hokkien Mee. Vegetarian Hokkien Mee, actually, uh, if you compare the taste, is relatively similar to the normal Hokkien Mee, you know, the prawn noodles that we have eaten. Another dish that I like, Xingzhou Chao Mee Fen. It's also very nice. It's got the wok hei. It's very important, la, you must have the wok hei. Okay. We are off to our final stop for the day. Let's eat something also a little bit sour, a little bit spicy, but also a little bit sweet. Off to our next stop at 515. We are at Block 515 Coffee Shop. This is the place that residents commonly see me around here very frequently. It's because I like the desserts. Here, this is the famous rojak and the rojak here is famously well known among many of the residents. By the, this is the one that we have here. It looks pretty similar to the black one but the difference is this one is vegetarian friendly. They don't use the shrimp paste but instead they use, um, the auntie use a special concoction of plum sauce. One tip for you if you come here to have this rojak don't come so early, okay? I came here sometimes at about 11 a.m., 12 p.m. until not open yet. Next one that I want to introduce, Pai Guo Yi Mi Fu Chu Tian Tang. So what we have here is we've got ginkgo nuts, bali, and um, bean curds. Another one is also my favorite, as you can see, also got yu tiao la. Is tau suan. So auntie's tau suan, right? She's very generous and she actually includes some special ingredients that not many other places you see have it, you know. She adds water chestnut inside and all of these are all handmade by auntie. And the price is very reasonable, trust me. This marks the last stop that we have for our vegetarian team in Wood Group. I hope you enjoy the show and I'll see you around next time for our next episode in Food Trail in Wood Group. See ya! We have now come to the end of our webinar. Thank you for your participation. Meanwhile, please stay tuned to our upcoming webinar. Please like and share. 
the Terra 2236 Facebook page. Download Terra 2236 from the Google Play or App Store and learn more about sustainability, efforts, energy, water and waste. See you!